Hey everyone, so in today's video, I am going to be talking about such an interesting launch from the brand Say. They're gluey, <laughs> they're gluey, Jesus. They're glowy super skin foundation. As a lover of the glow, as a lover of makeup and foundation that looks like skin, I knew that I was gonna test this out. And pretty much every time I've been wearing makeup, I have been testing this foundation. So I'm really familiar with it. But if you guys are a fan of reviews on like really skin-like foundations or supposedly skin-like foundations, you're just trying to find the best formulas for you. I'm a big formula person. I really love reviewing and getting into the nitty gritty. That's what I do here. So I would love to have you back on my channel. So make sure to subscribe. And by the way, I'm Amanda if I didn't already say that. So the Glowy Super Skin retails for $40 and it comes in 36 different shades. Beautiful glass bottle. I gotta tell you though, uh, just right off the bat, I am noticing as I've continued to use this, it gets a little bit messier than I would like up at the top. And I immediately got something in my eye less than a minute into the video. I have the shade three and four. I'm actually wearing the shade three today. I do think I can kind of get away with either, but I do find myself reaching for the shade four over the shade three. I have more of like a neutral kind of undertone um, and neither three or four are completely neutral. I kind of find myself mixing the two as well. But like I said, it comes in 36 different shades. I really like the growth that I'm seeing from Say. Um, I think this is definitely a larger shade range within the foundation than their first complexion launch. So that's definitely good. Um, and by the way, I am wearing the Hydra Beam under my eyes. The Say Hydra Beam Concealer is one of the only concealers I like for my hollow under eyes. I talk about that a lot on my channel, but it is one of those things though that I feel like a lot of concealers don't really cater to that. And something that I've always loved about the Hydra Beam is that it doesn't exaggerate the um, troughs that I have. But anyway, for me, this feels like a very standard foundation launch on paper. You get a little bit over an ounce of product, 40 bucks, good shade range. These are kind of like, all right, it, it's checking the boxes for me in a lot of ways. But what makes this different, and I think the big differentiator that I am noticing with this launch is the actual ingredient list and kind of the story behind the formula. This, my friends, is quite a unique formula and we're gonna get into it now. So according to Say, this foundation is 85% skincare serum. And that is quite a claim. So I went into the ingredients list and kind of took a look. The first ingredient is actually marshmallow root extract. Second ingredient is ascorbyl palmitate, which is actually like a vitamin C derivative. So if you typically have issues with like vitamin C serums, like ascorbic acid, this is a more well tolerated version of a vitamin C, typically oil soluble. So that makes sense to me. Personally, I have a lot of trouble with vitamin C. It often can like really irritate my skin if I don't have a good formula. And I was surprised literally looking at this this morning and doing the research that this had vitamin C in it because I have not had any awkward reactions. So to me, it makes sense that this is a more stable version of that. And the third ingredient is carpal hyd Usually it's a, a stabilizer ingredient. And then the fourth ingredient is diaprocol carbonate, which is like a smoothing agent and emollient. This formula, I mean, it is reading skincare to me. It's not reading foundation. The first ingredient isn't even water. It's marshmallow root extract, which is not only saying that this is a skincare formula, but it's also a concentrated formula. Immediately, I'm reminded of when uh, Ilya recently came out with like a skincare serum, like a vitamin C kind of skincare hybrid. They released not enough shades and then you put it on your skin. First of all, it was like 60 something dollars. Then you put it on your skin and immediately I was like, this is not blending. My skin is on fire. So having done more research, I'm like, this is something really special, not just on paper, but in practice. This feels like innovation to me. And that's when I get really excited about formulas is when it feels like something completely different. Now, according to Say, they say to keep the skin prep with this product very light. And I completely agree. When I've gone in with, for example, my Merit 
great skin um, emulsion as like a primer, I find that it just doesn't sit the same way. I don't think it sinks into my skin as well as it could. So they recommend, you know, just applying it to bare skin, like putting on sunscreen and then just applying it or just keeping the skin prep in general very light. So if you're someone that you love a 10 step skincare routine in the morning and then you go in and apply this, I just have a feeling this is not going to be the product for you if you have a very extensive skincare routine in the morning. They also mentioned that because it is a serum foundation, it works better being pressed into the skin like a serum rather than rubbed. But for me personally, and the way that I have demoed the product for you guys, is I love applying this with my fingers and it definitely gives me like MAC face and body vibes. I like to apply it with fingers, not like rub 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 necessarily but I do like to kind of drag it in kind of a downward motion onto the skin press it in and then go in with either a dry sponge I think dry is important it will retain the coverage of this product using a dry sponge or even a small dense brush to kind of press the product in and I think that it applies really beautifully they mentioned that a little bit goes a long way for me personally I love layering this. I mean, I, you know, I, I love a medium coverage. If I'm being honest, when I have medium coverage on, I feel like my best. I also love like a sheer product that just makes my skin look like really good skin. <laughs> this has a really nice balance because I feel like I can build it up. Because this is such a serum-like foundation, this is the way I have found it to apply the best. And I think it's really key, the way I have been the most excited and really, really happy with the way it's looked is when I did go sunscreen foundation. Like I basically applied my serum of choice, a light layer of moisturizer, sunscreen on top, and then this, and I've been like, Really, I, I've been really happy with the way it looks. The serum-like texture is really nice. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin, but it is a glowier product. So I just am feeling like if you're someone that wants like a step above something like the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint, the Kosas uh, Tinted Face Oil, this to me feels like the innovative perfected version of those kinds of products. So if you reach for those all the time, this is something that I think you might be really impressed with. I really enjoy how beautifying it is on the skin. It has this really lovely blur to my pores that I don't know where it's coming from. You know, I am obviously not a chemist, but looking at the ingredients list, I'm just not understanding how it's able to give me this really beautifying blurring effect without silicones. Um, that it feels really interesting and it just piques my curiosity. The first few times I wore this, I did go in with my typical skin prep. So I usually really layer on the moisture and then go into this. And I found when I did that, it was too glowy for me. I was like, this is just a lot of glow. But again, when I've kept it very simple, applied this with fingers, I've just felt like my skin looks like skin and it looks fresh, hydrated, perfected. And I don't know what to tell you guys. It just doesn't look like a lot of makeup. This also, I have found, it takes powder really, really well, which is not something that I was expecting. With some more dewy products, the minute that you put on powder, it can either melt back into the skin and kind of create, you know, just a slightly more satin finish that still looks like skin, or, they kind of just sit next to each other and they don't really melt in together. And I have found, I've been using the Say Air Set. I pulled it back out to test it with their foundation. I'm wearing it today and I just really like the way it looks. But that leads me to believe that if you are someone with combination skin or oily skin, I just can't imagine this being the best product for you. As someone with dry skin, the fact that I can do so little skin prep, apply this all over, get a really pretty look, and then even lightly powder to get a perfected look, like that to me makes me really excited as someone with dry skin, but it makes me 
feel like someone with oily skin just would not get along with this. However, there is something really comforting about the ingredients list and how I can continue to apply this and potentially see the overall benefits in my skin. And that is something that, you know, we are definitely seeing cosmeceuticals and in general, just lines of skincare and makeup start to blur. And I've been pretty outspoken about this on my channel that I do think that some products that lean heavily on skincare ingredients just don't have the formulas to back them up. And being completely honest with you guys, if I'm going to put on a makeup product, I need it to perform as well as my other makeup products. And I've been really impressed with this solely as a makeup product, not necessarily a blend of skincare and makeup, if that makes sense. I know everyone's preferences are different, um, what everyone is looking for is different, but even just solely as a makeup product, I'm, I'm really liking it. And, and the fact that the ingredients list is so good on top of that just makes me more excited about it. But I do think that there is, in general, a learning curve to this product. It's going to be figuring out what best skin prep is going to work with your skin and the foundation. And another word to the wise about this is when you pump out this product, you're going to get the true color of what it's going to look like. But if you go to mix it, I don't know if you guys can even see there, it's gonna go a touch lighter, but that is not really the true color of the product. I think what's happening here is something with the iron oxides inside of the product. I very vaguely remember something similar happening with the Ilia Super Serum Skin Tint or possibly the Kosas um, Tinted Face Oil. It's something about, you know, the way I think the um, pigments are suspended. You have to let it dry in order to get the true color. So don't sit here and do this and be like, oh, that's the color I'm gonna get. It's not, it's just the color that pumps out. So I really hope that's helpful for you guys. That's something I learned on my own. As a whole, I've just been feeling like particularly right in here, I've just been noticing foundations sitting there more often. Um, I don't know, sometimes, you know, all of our skin goes through things, right? We have seasons in our skin. Every day can be different for some of us, you know what I mean? And I think that it says a lot that right now, that area is looking so much more smooth than it has in the past with some foundations that I use all of the time. Feeling really good about this launch from Say. I say that if you are a fan of the tinted moisturizer from Say, the one from Ilia, the Kosas Tinted Face Oil, any of these more emollient uh, liquid tinted moisturizers, this one from Say does feel like a more innovative version of those products. And one last note that I thought might be interesting to some of you, recently House Labs came out with a foundation and I know a lot of people really like that one. Personally, it did not help with kind of the texture on my skin. I didn't like the way it sat. You know, a really large selling point of that foundation was the uh, fermented Arnica. But if you look at the ingredients, it is still a very heavily silicone based foundation. I would say that if you guys tried out that one and you weren't a fan, it was too much silicone and it kind of made the pores look more obvious. You know, that is that kind of very gentle balance between silicone. Sometimes too much can be not enough for some people. You know, everyone's skin is different, but I would say if you didn't like the house labs, I would highly suggest checking this one out, especially if you were leaning towards the house labs foundation specifically for skincare benefits, because the ingredients list on this one is just what is just more impressive overall. I have to say, I'm pretty excited about it. I think that this is definitely an interesting launch. It makes me excited to see what they have next, which is always a good feeling for me. No one wants to feel bored by makeup. You know, I always look for what's coming next, what are brands doing to innovate, and this definitely feels innovative to me. Also, by the way, I'm trying out these lip balms from Naturium. I guess I'm one of the last people to try them out, honestly. I'm wearing this shade today. I'll leave it down below. My lips, uh, my lips are thanking me <laughs> for incorporating these into my makeup looks because holy crap, they were a little mad at me re as of recent. I also have the berry shade. It doesn't really go with my lip look 
or my makeup look, but like we could do a little gradient. Ooh. Oh. Oh, that's good. All right, guys, I really hope this was helpful. I'm going to leave the product down below for you guys. Thank you so much for being here. I know I say it in every video, but I really do mean it. I appreciate you being here. I will see you guys in my next one.